Do you want to build a custom bar graph in SharePoint, but you don't want to learn Power BI? I don't blame you. Let me show you an easy way to do this using JSON formatting in a simple list. Now this solution comes to us from Anoop Tati. Sorry if I butchered that name, but Anoop is a member of the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community, and he's created something really special that I wanted to show you. Let's check this thing out in action, and then we'll start talking about how it's made. So the way this works is obviously it's a bar graph, as I said, and it's gonna read your list data and present it with two different axes, one representing the views and the other, in this case, representing the blogs. So this is really gonna show that blog traffic based on list data. Now this is uh, really just reading list data directly. It's not looking at actual traffic. So don't confuse this with uh, a web analytics type of solution. And now if I hover over these bars, you'll see the blog that each of these bars will represent. The main blog having the most views is also an IT blog and an accounting blog on here. You see the view counts at the top. So you have a quick view of how many views these things are getting. And there's also a dotted line across the top. And in this case, that's more of a benchmark that once something hits that mark, it is now trending uh, according to how this JSON was developed. There's also a neat little crown to show who the winner is during this reporting period, which is also a nice, interesting touch. So let's build this out. And if we look at the data, then you'll see just how simple this was. It's three columns. That's it very simple slick solution in this thing cool now let's just blow the whole thing away and rebuild it from scratch and in the documentation for this solution it will show you which columns need to be added and what the requirements are for those now let's populate this with some data now that we've got some data, let's create the new view with the formatting applied. We go to advanced mode and we'll paste in all of our JSON. And there we have it. It's already running. It's that simple. Now let's take a look at how this whole thing works. And if you're wondering how to build these things, how to learn this JSON, I've actually got an online course that I'm about to launch on January 1st. But right now I've actually got a Black Friday sale going on. There's seven days left. That's it. We're winding this thing down. But right now you can save over 50% off the full price of this course. This course will walk you through how all the JSON works, all the different options you can specify in this JSON, because at first glance, JSON formatting does look overwhelming. I'm the first to admit that. But this course is going to walk you through how it's all created, all the options you can specify. You'll start building solutions, and just like anything else, if you put in the repetition and continue to learn, you will master this in no time. Let me get you started understanding all of this and building solutions just like this for yourself and your organization. There's a link in the description below where you can see all the details for this course. But let's look at the JSON and start walking through it. So here's the JSON we pasted in. Let me open this window up a little bit more so we can see it better. You'll see that there's a row formatter right here. So anything inside this block is gonna get applied to every row of data in that list. We're creating a div. There's some basic HTML build out here and you'll see the border on the left, which is that vertical line that's coming from right here. The theme is being applied. And as soon as we get into this children property, we start to see the other elements come into play. You'll see the views option here. So that's being created in this span, followed by the Chevron up which you can see that below. You'll also see the Chevron right and the blogs tag that's down here. So if you wanted to represent views for blogs, you could use this as is, but if it needs to be something else and all you have to do is change these labels here and it could represent anything. Although to make a little bit more sense of the data, you'd want to update the column references as well. And we'll see that further down below. For instance, here we're referencing the views column. So all these references to views would need to be changed to something else if this should apply to different data. But you see a whole lot of different classes all being applied here according to different themes. And we're handling the views where if it's over 700, it's going to 
do something a little bit different. For instance, if it's over 700, we're not just going to specify the views as we hover over this, but instead we're going to say that it's also trending, which we can see here, but then you don't see it for the lower number because it didn't hit that threshold of 700. Here's where that 700 can be changed to whatever threshold you want it to be. You would change it here and here. Now, keep in mind, if you do change that threshold from 700, well, I say if you, you probably will change this to something that has meaning for you. But if you change that, then you're going to want to adjust up here where you see the dashed reference. So this is the dashed line that's going across. And in this case, that's referencing that 700 threshold. So you'll want to adjust the top property here so, so that it will come out to about where you want it to be at. But continuing down this JSON, you'll see the styling being applied to this bar to set the height. And here's where we're comparing that views field and checking to see you know, what, what's the value and just using simple math to determine how many pixels high this bar should be. There's also a drop shadow being applied, which a very faint one here, but you could always play around with this and get something that looks the way you want it to. And then here inside this div, you'll see the children field here, and it's gonna have the div with our crown. And we're just using a formula here for the display, the CSS display property, to see if, if the most red is equal to true, and if so, then it sets it to a block display as opposed to none, which would hide it. So this just simply shows or hides it for every bar, depending on if the most red field is set to a true. And also you'll see the view count being displayed here, and you see 1000 plus if it's over 1000, and that's, that's what you see right here as well. So that's where the view count's coming from, from these bars. And then another little icon here for that trending. So if in this case, if it's over 700, another, another reference to that threshold really, then we're gonna use this trending 12 icon, which is that little arrow, that lightning bolt or that upward trending arrow icon. That's where that's coming from. Very, very simple. Now, one thing I kind of forgot to do or didn't really think about when I was creating the view for this thing was I just used the all items view. So I actually ended up making it so I couldn't change the data unless I build a new view. So let's just create that new view so we still have access to edit that data. And then we'll talk about how we can get the data in there. So we've covered the formatting. Let me just close this. And what I'm gonna do is create a brand new view. Because again, the only view is all items and that's our visual uh, and we need uh, access to the real data. So we'll just create a new view. I can call this data. It's a simple list view and there we go. Now we've got access to our data again. So where can we get this data from? Let's talk about that. Now this could be maintained manually, I guess. That would be a terrible idea. Who wants to be doing simple data entry and, and constantly having to do this. It doesn't sound fun to me. I don't think it sounds fun to you. I want it easier. I, I like the lazy way. I like the automated way. So what I would go for first is using Power Automate. I would you know, use Power Automate to create a workflow that can go fetch this data. Now, if it's, if it's view counts, you may have to use some SharePoint APIs or something like that to get the view count from a particular sites or particular site pages maybe maybe the entire site page library i would loop through with using the api and grab all the view counts for all the different site pages for those those particular blogs and then i would uh do any aggregation of that data, summing up all the data for the blogs, that kind of thing, and then just put it right inside the list. That that would be my first choice for how to do this because that's really what Power Automate's for is for those types of workflows. And if I couldn't do that, then I would probably look for PowerShell. Um, use PowerShell to do that same thing. Again, you're gonna be using API calls probably to get this analytics data. So you're gonna be using something like PMP PowerShell. That'd be my go-to library to you know be able to interact with SharePoint like this. So that would be my second choice, but I would really, really work hard to try and get the Power Automate version working because you're gonna have to schedule this PowerShell somehow to all automatically run. That's probably gonna end up being an Azure runbook and you would have costs associated with using an Azure runbook 
but the Power Automate side, really no cost once you've got that license. And now let's talk about where you actually get this solution from, where you where you get this JSON from. Let me show you the site. So as I mentioned, Anoop Toddy created this and he's a part of the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community. And he put it inside the GitHub repo for the PNP community. You can see the URL at the top. It'll also be in the description of this video down below so you can find it and access it easy. And there's really just one file here. There's just this JSON file. And all you have to do is copy and paste this straight into your list once you've built out the columns. Now, there's also a handy reference for what columns you need to build out because they're right here on the view requirements. So as long as you've got these columns added with these particular names, unless you change the JSON to match, of course, then you'll be able to build this out just like we did. Now, JSON really isn't that hard to understand once you break it down into some basic components and start building out that knowledge. And that's why I've structured my online course the way I've done so that it will hold your hand and take you every step of the way, building and building and building on your knowledge until you're able to start creating things just like this. So again, there's a link in the description to that course. I highly recommend you check it out and just see what this thing has to offer you. And if you wanna see another course cool example of what JSON can do, then click up into this video where you see a really neat image preview solution built out. So you can click on an image and take, well, you'll see what it does. So go check out that video and I'll see you on the next one.